artists, welcome to your cat on a tree painting. In front of you, you should have your canvas, nice and long, ways like so. You should have a cup of water, a paper towel, a larger and a smaller brush. Also, be sure to have white, black, dark blue, purple, and a plate just in case you need to mix any paints. All right, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're gonna do is we are going to wash our two brushes. So I'm gonna swirl them around in my cup of water, get them nice and clean, and then I'm gonna gently dry them on my paper towel by just tapping on them. Perfect. We are gonna start on our background before we build the tree, uh, the stars or the cat, and everything in the background is nice and round. So we're gonna have our nice round moon and all those nice round circles or rings of purple and dark blue. So go ahead and grab your larger brush of the two and you are gonna grab a little bit of your dark blue first. I'm just gonna grab a little bit of my dark blue and I'm gonna make the shape of my moon first, probably like an inch or so down from the corner is gonna be the right corner of my moon and then I can go ahead and complete that circle all the way around. And it doesn't have to be a perfect circle. Mine isn't. And it's gonna be definitely bigger than a quarter size. It's a good size circle, about this far off from the corner of your canvas. Once you are done, I want you to go ahead and start making a thicker ring around your circle. So you're gonna go around your circle like that. And it's like a donut shape. Once you are done, I want you to leave a little bit of a space and almost make like a big C shape. And that C shape is gonna be a little bit thicker too. So you wanna make that C a little bit thicker as well. Also with that C shape, please continue it to the top of your canvas and to the right of your canvas. Once you are done, I want you to come down a little bit uh, further down and start off to the left, make another round almost C shape, it's almost a C. And as you see, my lines are nice and long all the way from one side to the next. This is all with my blue paint. And I am gonna carry over that blue a little bit to the left a little bit to the right, just like I did before. Perfect. Once I'm done, I'm gonna come a little bit lower down. I'm just kind of working off the edge. Like so, you'll see this triangle, and I do want to go all the way down to the corner. Nice, long, smooth lines, all the way from one side to the next. And I'm gonna go ahead and carry over all this space on the bottom that kind of carries over to the bottom part of my canvas and all that space to the left where the, the top of my triangle kind of carries over like so. So I've just kind of started a nice round background with, for, my, um, for my cat and tree painting. And then I'm gonna kinda go back and I'm gonna make this a little bit darker. Maybe come out just a little bit further too. Back. Nice, long, smooth lines. Just a little bit. Go back, nice, long, smooth lines and just make these all a little bit darker. So I'm just pretty much going back and giving them all a nice second coat. Perfect. Perfect. Once you're done, you can go back and to your dark blue and a little bit of your white. Tap it on your paper towel. So 
dark blue, a little bit of your white, tap on your paper towel, and go between all these spaces that you have left that are still white. So dark blue, a little bit of white, tap, 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 then go between all those spaces that, you, that are still white and add this lighter blue. So you're just pretty much making it lighter blue with your dark blue, a little bit of your white, tap it on your paper towel so you don't have too much on there, and you're going between each area that you just did with a little bit of a lighter blue. And I always like to kind of overlap over my darker blue with my lighter blue. So I'm just gonna go over my darker blue just a little bit here, just a little bit there, and I'm gonna carry over that lighter blue off to the bottom and to the side so I don't have any white space. So I'm pretty much taking my dark blue and my white and filling up the uh, white space, just making sure that I'm moving my brush in a nice round formation. So I'm kind of continuing on that lighter blue. So dark blue, a little bit of white, tap on your paper towel, and I go in between those two areas. Dark blue, white. So I'm making kind of like a lighter blue area between each one of my dark blue rings. Again, carry through your, your light blue from one side to the next. You, want, you don't want to see those stop and go movements. You want to really keep that brush going all the way from one side to the next. And again, whatever just kind of carries through over to the side. Right. I'm gonna kind of continue this one down here for that. So this light blue carries over. I'm gonna top it as well. So between each dark blue that ring that I made, I'm making a light blue ring. I'm going over it with nice, long, smooth lines so I don't see the stop and go movement of my brush. I'm gonna go back and, and if you wanna go back and fix up anything, you can always go back and kind of touch it up. Perfect. Don't forget to kind of go over your dark blue with your light blue. All right, so dark blue, white. And I'm just kind of moving up closer to my moon. Ooh, so I need to grab a little bit more white on there. Tap on my paper towel. So I'm kind of continuing that C shape, but guess what? I have to go all the way around now with this lighter blue mix because I have all this white space that I want to kind of continue all the way around. And I am going to be kind of going into that dark blue just a little bit too. A little bit onto the dark blue here as well. So I have that blended area where the dark blue and the light blue work together a little bit better. So nice complete circles all the way around. Go into your dark blue a little bit with your light blue. And I'll kind of continue this light blue all the way around on top to the sides. In just a moment we will be adding a little bit purple and white but if you want to go back and touch up your dark blue and light blue you can if you want to clean it up. If you want to make it darker you can go back and give everything a second coat which means you let it dry for a couple minutes then you go back and kind of touch it up. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to kind of give mine a moment to dry and I can go back and give it a second coat. So go back to my dark blues. I'm gonna make them a little bit darker. So dark blue, go back to this dark blue. Nice long lines from one side to the next. I always think going back and touching things up 
helps. Kind of gives your canvas a little bit of a better coverage. Gets into all those spaces a little bit better. Don't forget the sides. Here. If you're finding it hard for your paint to move, you can um, add a little bit of more water to your brush, tap it on the paper towel. And then um, go over your canvas. So if you're finding it hard for your paint to move, add some water to your brush. Tap it on the paper towel so there's not too much water and then go on to your canvas. Now I'm just going back and giving my light blue another coat. I'm sure I'm kind of overlapping over my dark blue just a little bit. Make sure you're going completely around in this one and going closer to your mouth. Perfect. All right, before I move on, um, I'm uh, going to just kind of wipe my brush on my paper towel. I don't have to have it completely washed. I'm gonna go over to my purple. So I'm gonna go over to my purple. I'm gonna tap it on my paper towel so I don't have too much on there. And I'm gonna make a ring up here, kind of where that first C shape was, uh, but more towards the moon. I'm just gonna add a little bit of purple, kind of following that C shape. So purple, tap, tap, tap. And from one side to the next. So I'm kind of following that C shape Getting closer to my moon, nice long smooth lines from one side to the next. Add purple to my brush again. And I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna make another purple on the inside of this larger C shape. And come up and over my dark blue just a little bit too. Making sure everything in the background is nice and moving in a circular motion. And then more purple, tap it on my paper towel. And kind of go a little bit more forward from this triangle shape that I made before. Again, kind of keeping my brush moving in almost like a C formation with a little bit of a curve. Perfect. So I have one, two, three areas of my purple. Then I'm going to go ahead and wash. And dry my big brush. I am going to add some white stars and my white moon next. My paint got really dirty, so if you want, you can always kind of clean up the top or whatever you need to do. Um, but I'm just gonna um, get a little bit lower on my paint and use the, the white that I have in there. Um, but again, if you want, you can just kind of take off the top layer of your white paint and wipe it off. I've been using the same white paint for a while, so mine's probably a little bit dirtier than yours. Um, but the next thing I'm gonna do is take the back of my big brush, so not the front part where there's the hair, but the back, I'm gonna dip it into my white paint I'd probably give my background a couple minutes to dry before I do this. So if you want to give your uh, background a couple minutes to dry where it's not so shiny anymore, then I can use the back to add some white dots for stars. And they're very random. I'm going to use the back of my big brush. Make some dots. Remember, they're just kind of all over the place. 
you don't want to line them up anywhere. And you can have some bigger stars where you push a little bit harder on the back of your big brush and some um, uh, bigger and, and smaller ones. So the harder you push on the back of your brush, the bigger that your dots become. So be sure you have a nice variety of larger and smaller brushes. Even when your cat and your tree are gonna be, you wanna go ahead and add some stars underneath there too. Just kind of all over the place. You can add as many as you want, but you don't want to do too, too many. You don't want to overwhelm your sky. Too many of these. Grab some of this. All right. And once I'm done, I am going to give um, my background some more time to dry. So I would uh, maybe just kind of give your painting a couple minutes to dry. You can pause the video if you need to. Uh, but I'm gonna clean off the back of my brush whenever I'm done with the stars. I would give it a couple minutes to dry and then I'm gonna go ahead and wash and dry my brush and paint my moon white. Paint my moon white. So again, my white's gonna be way dirtier than yours, sorry about that. I tap on my paper towel and I'm gonna go in there and fill in the space. It is absolutely okay if a little bit of blue gets on your moon because I am gonna go a little bit further out. You just wanna move that brush in a nice round formation. If you feel like your moon is getting too blue, let it dry and go back to more white to kind of white it out. Again, I'm just kind of following that circle shape. This is the time that you do want to make sure that your moon is a little bit more of a cleaner circle. So be sure you have a good circle shape. Mine did get a little bit too blue, so I'd probably give it a couple minutes to dry and then go back. My blue was still a little bit too wet. So definitely be sure to give your background some time to dry and then you can go back and add some more white on your moon. My moon is definitely bigger than a quarter size. It is nice and round. I'm going to dig it a little bit further out than what I originally started with. Perfect. Again, be sure your background is nice and dry before we add any of the tree or the cats. So you want a nice dry background. Um, for the sake of time, I'm just gonna keep going, but um, if you wanted to pause the video before you started the next part, that would be probably the best idea. Um, the next step is our tree. We are gonna have our tree go up and then under, have a nice branch for our cat to sit on. Our branches do have swirls at the end of it, so nice little um, small movements kind of curling in with our brush. And um, again, be sure that you have a nice long branch here underneath to have your cat to sit on. Um, and be sure again, the background is nice and dry. So for my tree, I am gonna use my small brush. So I'm finally gonna use my small brush and I am gonna use my black paint, my black paint. I'm gonna come up and over a little bit from the bottom left corner and make kind of a little line here. And then I'm gonna go up Almost halfway, I would say halfway is about here. But I'm gonna go up and make a line going that way. And then I'm gonna go back for more black, not too much, and tap on the paper towel. And I kind of break it off into a Y shape, but again, just kind of coming over it in diagonal, like so. Once I'm done, I'll start down here where it kind of started that line, I'll come up 
a bit further. Again, I'm using my small brush. Go diagonal to the left. And then I am going to make a swirl. So underneath here, underneath here, I'm going to kind of pull it and kind of in like a swirl. So it's almost like the number six, but not completely filled in. Once I'm done, I'm going to come up and go all the way up. Go all the way up. And then about halfway point, I'm going to come over and make two diagonal. And I'm going to come over and again, kind of make that number six. And I'm going to come up here. Up in that little swirl. And I'm just kind of laying it out. Later on, I'll go in there and just kind of clean it up. But I want to make sure I find all my branches. And this is my small brush. And then once I'm done, I can come up here. There is a little bit of a swirl too. So they almost look like kind of sixes curling in. Once I'm done, I'm gonna come between these two and just kind of make a diagonal line coming this way. And I'll make a swirl coming in. Again, all with my small brush. And then this one kind of breaks off into Shape right there. It's kind of curling in like a backward six. I am going to come down to this one right here. So, this one right here that we started off with that little swirl that looks like a six. I'm going to come up into diagonal. Swirl this one in. And then swirl that one around. Like so. And then after I'm done with this one, I am going to go back and just kind of clean it up. So I just want to go back with my small brush, nice long nut lines, maybe make the branches a little bit thicker. Down here, I'm going to still use my small brush. Nice long lines. You can use the side of your brush just to kind of drag it to make it look a little bit cleaner. But once you're done with this first space, you can go in there and just kind of clean it up. And just remember, the harder you push with your small brush, the thicker you're going to go in there and make that line. So I'm going to go in there and drag my brush. I'll go all the way up just to kind of get that clean line. This is all black. solid black. You don't want to see any of that blues or purples in the background. Alright. And once I'm done, I'm going to kind of go down here and play down here a little bit more. Maybe come out a little bit to the left. So I will drag my brush a little bit to the left. It's a little bit thicker on my tree. And then I am going to come out a little bit further on the right. So I'll come out just a little bit further. I don't want to get too thick, too fast with my tree, but I'll bring this one in. So my tree is almost like a triangular shape on the bottom. I'll drag my brush. Just create the bottom area of my tree. Don't get it too thick. You can always start thinner and get it thicker and thicker, but be sure don't go too big with the bottom part of your tree. And probably just kind of where this one breaks off on the left is a good place to kind of start making this line that kind of swirls off to the right. So kind of where this left one is, kind of make this one look a little more. I'm going to come up to a diagonal. I'm going to start making some swirls that are kind of coming off this diagonal branch. So in the middle, This swirl that kind of looks like the number six. So 
and so I'm gonna work my way up. Come up a little bit more diagonal. I swirl to the left and out to the right. See that main curve right there? I can start working up the tree as well. So I'm going to work off of this one right here. Just nice little swirls. I'm going to come out a little bit to the right right here. Make a swirl right here. I'm going to work my way up. Just kind of There's left, and on this second to the last one, I do have some coming in right here. Okay, we're kind of curling in, and the one that's a little bit further up, also kind of curling in. Looks like an E shape or a six shape. These ones that are breaking off over here, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come off this main branch and just gonna slowly create this nice curve that helps them look a little bit more curvy and not so straight. Same with these. I'm gonna kinda go in there and make them work into the branch a little bit more. So I'm just gonna coming out and in a little bit. So kind of making them work side the branch shape a little bit better. There we go. Make this one kind of come into the branch a little bit more. There we go. So what I was doing is just kind of coming up a little bit and then just kind of bringing them into the branch shape a little bit more so it doesn't look so straight. They just kind of have this curve that starts with that main branch. All right. Um, the next thing I am going to do is I'm going to make two more longer curves. I'm going to start down here where the cat's going to kind of sit. I'm going to start a little bit lower down. I'm going to curve down just a little bit. So I get a nice long one. Curve down where the cat's bottom's going to be at. Okay, this main branch right here. And then I'm gonna curl up and kind of just swirl in. And I'm gonna curl down, swirl in. And there is another one just kind of breaking off here to the side. And swirl in. next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come up a little bit further from this main branch and start um, kind of to the right of this little swirl right here. Come up into a diagonal. Just a little bit of a swirl. I don't want to go into the space where the cat's going to be. The cat's going to be right about here. I'm going to come up and break off on this one. Make that swirl again. Be sure you're leaving space for your cat. So right to the right of this one, I came up and I swirled in. And then I kind of broke off into that one. I swirled in again. Okay, so I'm gonna keep it. And again, I'm going to kind of create a little curve right here. It curves into that straight line so it looks a little bit more natural and not so straight. All right. I'm going to clean up this one too. Perfect. I am going to come up a little bit further after this one. And I'm going to start making my line now that my moon is hopefully a little bit more dry. I'm going to come up, make a swirl, turn that way, making a swirl. If you don't have too much space for this, it's okay. Just do your best to make it work. 
Yeah. Dip down. Make sure your moon is nice and dry. Mine's a little bit wet. And then we are going to kind of swirl up this way and in. And then I'm going to break off here and down. My one is still a little bit wet. I'm going to come up and then over to this one. And there is one kind of over here, come out a little bit. And again, if you don't have room for all these, not a problem. Just kind of make it work with the space that you have. And I'll let that dry for a little bit, and I'll go back and add some more black on top of it. But it's, my moon is still a little bit wet. Whenever you are ready for your cat, kind of imagine exactly where it's sitting. Oh, sorry, I'm gonna just up just a bit. Kind of imagine where it's sitting. How tall is it gonna be? Where is the tail going to be? So just kind of have a nice little um, area for the cat to sit in. Small brush still, black paint. The first thing you do is create its body. It's gonna be like an egg shape where it's a little bit pointing on top. I'm gonna make an egg shape, a little bit more round on the bottom. So a little bit more pointy on top. The tail looks like the letter J, but with a little bit of swirl. So I'm gonna drop down here and bring that to a nice little curve. The head is kind of like a, um, a wide oval. So let me show you how. So I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna kind of cover up the the pointiness of the the egg shape too. So I'm gonna come overlap over it just a little bit. The ears are two small triangles so to the left and to the right. And then I can go in there and kind of fill in the head a little bit more. Fill in the body a little bit more. And I'm gonna go in there and fill in the tail a little bit more too. There are also some whiskers on the cat. When you do the whiskers, be sure you're just on the very tippy toe of your small brush. Um, you can, you're gonna get your hands a little bit dirty, but you can always kind of bring your small brush to a point by just twirling the, your small brush like so. Tiny bit of black, top some off on your paper towel, and I'm gonna make little lines just kind of coming out from the side of the face. So I made one coming up, one coming down, and then one between the two. Same on the left side. One coming up, one coming down, and then between the two. Perfect. Before you're done, if you wanna go back and touch up any of your swirls on your tree, if you wanna go back, you can add probably some more stars in the sky if you want some more stars in the sky. You wanna go back and kinda of touch up the cat as well. I'm gonna definitely go back and kind of touch up my swirls um, and then make sure my lines look nice and neat for my tree just by just dragging the, the sides of my brush. If you don't feel like you have to be done right now, you can always go back and touch up. Just be aware if a wet color touches another wet color, it is going to um, blend. So if you wanna uh, wait for things to dry before you build on top of them or next to them, that might not be a bad idea. But otherwise, your swirly cat painting is all done. Great job, artists. I hope you had a fun time. Thank you so much again from Young at Art.